As noted above, regeneration was not guaranteed. The doctor on numerous occasions believed they were at risk of actually dying. Even with regeneration a possibility, the doctor came to feel such a change as being a death. In recollecting the events surrounding the master's attempt to steal the Eye of Harmony, the eighth doctor referred to his incarnations as lives. TV. Doctor Who. The Doctor's third. TV. Planet of the Spiders. Fourth. TV. Logopolis. Ninth. TV. The Parting of the Ways. Tenth. TV. The End of Time. And twelfth. TV. Twice Upon a Time. Incarnations referred to their regenerations as the end of their life. The Twelfth Doctor also referred to regeneration, though not his own, as the same as death, but also stated that to Time Lords, death was simply, man flu. TV. Hellbent. When faced with regeneration himself, however, this Doctor truly valued his life, resisting the process as he didn't want to change. TV. The Doctor Falls. TV. The Day of the Doctor. The Twelfth Doctor was also rather fond of the First Doctor, in a way very much tied to their shared identity. Presented with this embodiment of his younger days, the Twelfth Doctor was amused at the first sold ways, such as how he still called the TARDIS, the ship, and how he looked wearing the sonic sunglasses. He was, nonetheless, incredibly embarrassed by his original incarnation's occasional sexist remarks. The First Doctor's reaction to his future was much less warm. He was dismayed at learning the Twelfth Doctor played the electric guitar, and disappointed in the Twelfth Doctor's lackluster treatment of their TARDIS, deeming the new decoration, hideous, and expressing dismay at the dirtiness of the console room, which he attributed to the absence of Polly Wright, who, in his days, cleaned the TARDIS for him. He also criticized the Twelfth Doctor's over-reliance on technology over his own intellect, and his need to always boast about his plans. As a whole, the First Doctor was, at first, horrified to learn he would eventually become a Doctor of War. However, he grew to admire his future self, believing their actions were for the greater good rather than malicious purposes as he initially believed. TV. Twice upon a time. Most other Time Lords never expressed any strong opinions about their other incarnations as they had never met their other selves. However, the Twelfth General noted an immediate dissatisfaction with her predecessor shortly after her regeneration. TV. Hellbent. More notably, when the Time Lord Straxus learned that he would become the insane Cotrus in his next incarnation, 
He was horrified at his next self, proclaiming that Cotrus was a psychopath, although Cotrus claimed that his insanity was the result of Straxus's insanity and self-loathing. However, despite his disgust at Cotrus's actions, Straxus only made a few half-hearted efforts to kill himself to avoid becoming Cotrus which were prevented by a drone Cotrus had sent, until the final confrontation between the two incarnations culminated in Straxus being exterminated as even the Daleks were disgusted with his selfishness. Audio. X and the Daleks. When the master made contact with the cult of the heretic and was offered an alliance with them if he killed one of his past selves, with the promise that the cult would use the anomaly cage to prevent him being wiped out by the paradox, the master laughed as he dismissed his past incarnations as foolish. Although he later claimed that he had targeted his past self at a point when he knew that the younger master would survive, the two masters found it difficult to cooperate, as the younger master was more serious and dedicated to ensuring victory where the future master's new lease on life had left him more inclined to make various bad jokes as he taunted his enemies. The older master noted that the cult's plans to remake the universe had been inspired by the beliefs of the renegade Time Lord known as the Heretic, whose belief that the universe was sick, led him to perceive regeneration as the only cure for this illness. Audio. The two masters, Time Lords such as the War Chief, were unconcerned about wasting regenerations, or Romana, who regenerated with no apparent need in order to assume an appearance she liked. TV, Destiny of the Daleks, Prose, The Shadows of Avalon while others such as the Doctor warned not to waste them. Pros. Invasion of the Cat People. Iris Wild Time once confided in Sam Jones that regeneration was treated on Gallifrey the same way sex was on Earth. Pros. The Scarlet Empress. In general, the Doctor avoided discussing regeneration with their companions unless someone else brought it up first. TV. Planet of the Spiders. But explained the process in the aftermath. They were particularly open about the process in their eighth incarnation telling companion Charlie Pollard about regeneration and their past faces, noting at one point that he considered regeneration superior to the straightforward immortality of the ruthless Sebastian Grail, as regeneration allowed him to change and develop as time went on where Grail was stuck with one point of view and no real way to change. Audio. Seasons of Fear. Despite this, the Doctor's attitude towards regeneration seemed to change during their later incarnations, considering it more like true death. In their ninth incarnation, the Doctor bade farewell to his companion even though he was not actually dying. TV. The Parting of the Ways. The Doctor's tenth incarnation was concerned about a prediction made regarding his own impending regeneration, saying, even if I change, it feels like dying. Everything I am dies. Some new man goes sauntering away. Dilt and I'm dead. TV. The End of Time. Their tenth incarnation also compared regeneration to a lottery in terms of what he becomes as a result of it. When meeting his immediate successor, he joked that his 11th incarnation's bigger sonic screwdriver was, compensating. TV. The Day of the Doctor. Following his regeneration into his 7th incarnation, the Doctor's memories of his 6th self's persona came to resent the current Doctor, accusing the current Doctor of, murdering, him, pros, head games, before the Doctor came to accept that he was the Doctor in all his lives and forgive the sins of his previous self. Pros. The room with no doors, the war doctor, however, accepted the start of his regeneration, remarking that his old body was, wearing a bit thin, and even joking about his hopes for getting less prominent ears. TV. The day of the doctor, after receiving his new regeneration cycle, the eleventh doctor appeared relatively comfortable about his imminent regeneration, reflecting that everyone changed throughout their lives and the important thing was to remember who you had been. TV. The time of the doctor, although his fear about the scale of the change he was about to experience prompted him to call his current companion in the personal future to ask her to stay with his next incarnation and help him through the transition to his new body. TV. Deep breath. The twelfth doctor later recalled that the end of the first doctor's life at Snowcap was, the place where died, comparing it to Clara Oswald's limited memories of her, splinters, by describing it as something so huge and terrible that the mind had to block it out in the aftermath. Comic. Blood and Ice. Despite his own attitude toward regeneration, both Harriet Jones, TV, The Christmas Invasion, and Sarah Jane Smith, TV, Death of the Doctor, felt the same way about the Doctor throughout their incarnations. Harriet called the Tenth Doctor, absolutely the same man, still believing in this despite the Doctor threatening to destroy her government after she ordered Torchwood to blow up the Psycharax spaceship. TV, The Christmas Invasion, The Stolen Earth, while the Brigadier noted that one Doctor was more than enough to deal with at any time, TV, the three Doctors, 
he nevertheless confidently proclaimed that all of the doctors were remarkable chaps, willing to work with whatever doctor answered his calls for help even if he acknowledged that he knew certain doctors better than others. Pros. The shadow in the glass. Despite the importance of regeneration, the doctor often failed to mention it to their companions, with the result that Ben, Polly, TV, the Tenth Planet, the Power of the Daleks, Perry, TV, the Caves of Androzani, the Twin Dilemma, and Rose, TV, the Parting of the Ways, Children in Need Special, initially didn't believe that the new doctor was the same person after their regeneration was complete. Even those companions who had been informed about the process in advance, such as Sarah Jane Smith, TV, Planet of the Spiders, Adric, TV, Logopolis, Melanie Bish, TV, Time and the Rani, and Clara Oswald, TV, The Time of the Doctor, took a while to accept the new Doctor. Despite the close relationship between the 13th Doctor and Yasmin Khan, she ultimately chose to leave the Doctor when regeneration was imminent, each silently acknowledging that Yaz was so close to that particular incarnation that she would find it too difficult to spend time with the next one, TV, The Power of the Doctor. After deciding to help the Doctor against the Mondasian Cybermen, the Missy incarnation of the Master was shown to see her past self as still being her, stating that she'd loved being him and the feeling of all that he was. However, due to her genuine desire to change, Missy mortally wounded her past self to force his regeneration into herself, appearing to see it as necessary to ensure the Master became Missy. TV. The Doctor Falls.